Welcome back to Hi. Making Walkabout in our gardens and yours virtually. Garden artistry is about sketching from your garden and learning what you can sketch in a way as you sketch from your garden. I'm still Stephen Nicola. I'm Jan Lakonovich. We're GardenAZ.org, and we brought our guest host, Carrie Yackling, to you today. We still have Sonia Nicola um, working in the chat, and we're going to turn things over to Carrie, who we have known for a long time. She's a visual arts instructor, and uh, the science being a uh, uh, very good when it comes to art. She's one of us. Uh, she also releases <laughs> butterflies and feeds birds and grows gardens and they're with her son Milo releasing a monarch butterfly. But most importantly today, she is someone very, very good at helping other people learn how to capture what they see and, and, and improve what they see. So we're going to turn the uh, 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 field over to Carrie, I'm going to stop my share, and Carrie's going to share her screen. Oh, supposed to be stop share. Click. There we go. There we go, Carrie. So Carrie All right. The studio. Yeah. Hello. Thank you, and thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be with some other fellow gardeners and creative people in general. So the first thing that I would like to mention to you is um, that gardening really is an art, isn't it? I mean. We love to garden because you're designing and you're placing and you're selecting and all of those things are artistic choices. So one of the things that we can get, um, Janet approached me, Janet and Steve approached me and said like, we want our, our clients to be able to kind of explore um, their gardens in a new way to get some enjoyment out of that. Um, and what about, what if we were going to sketch them? And I teach art and I've had several students ask me that as well. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today. And just talking about some of the steps of that. And then I'm going to walk you through some of it. I'm hoping we have time um, to be able to like start one with you to kind of see some of those things implemented in my classes, I find that it's really helpful if you, yes, discuss it, yes, show pictures, but then also for art, especially if you are able to demonstrate it with people, then they go, oh, I can do that. I understand that. So the first thing that um, I think is important for when you're looking at your garden to sketch, whether it's your garden or it's a garden that you like, you're visiting, you're traveling, you know, a friend's garden, whatever it is, but you're like, oh, this one is beautiful. I want to have a memory of this. Um, so one of the things to carefully consider is the composition. So we really want to look for interesting ways to look at that garden space. Um, and again, some of those things I know that Janet and Steve have talked about, oh, you know, over the past several years, again, are um, you want to look at the variety that's present um, and also contrast. So variety of size, variety of shape, are some round, are some tall and thin, do some spike out, you know, um, you want variety in there. Um, and also a range of values. So we're going to talk about that today too. Um, that might be new to you. That's really coming from the art world, but it is so applicable to gardening as well. Um, contrast, value, variety, um, and focal point, things like that. So um, what I'd like to talk to you about first, first is if you're like, well, I don't draw. Anybody like not draw at all? Like, <laughs> No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> and some of you are like, well, maybe I can sketch like a stick person and it's okay. <laughs> I drew my cat once. It was a circle. <laughs> so it, it's okay. The first thing that we want to lay down is essentially what we're talking about is landscape drawing. Okay. Your garden is a landscape. So for landscape drawing, there's typically three parts that you have to think about or consider whether you're planning to design it or um, if you've already designed it and you're just trying to capture it. Um, I want to share with you, this is a really great little sheet. It is not my sheet, but it's wonderful. It's free online. It's from Crayola of all places. And I love Crayola because, you know, who doesn't love crayons? So let me switch over really quickly to show you that. So um, what we're talking about is space. Anytime we're talking about, um, again, landscape or creating depth in space, what I want to point out to you is those three things that we need. We need a foreground, 
a middle ground and a background. And I love the simplicity of this because, you know, it's Crayola and they're like, for kids, let's make it nice and simple. Your garden is way more complex than this, but it gives you a real clarity about, okay, a foreground, a midground, and a background. The foreground, just so you know, typically sits towards the bottom of your page when you're going to sketch. Now, I want to point this out, these little parts, because this seems really commonsensical. Like, yeah, I should have known that, but it, I, I'm being very honest until somebody like pointed it out to me. I was like, oh yeah, I never thought about it that way. Right. So sometimes just having somebody like say it in that way, you go, oh yes, the foreground is what's closest to me. And when I'm drawing it, it's typically going to sit lowest on the page. Okay. That's the foreground, the foreground. Um, the next part is the midground, the midground. Now, and as you can guess, that's somewhere in, if I'm looking at the length from here to here, if I'm looking at this length, the foreground's at the bottom, the midground's in the middle. It's in the middle, right? The interesting thing about the midground is that usually for us, for garden sketching or for landscape sketching, a lot of the time, not all of the time, but a lot of time, this is where the action happens. The midground, usually. As, as the artist, as the designer, as you know, the garden designer, you get to select where that is when you're trying to, you know, create this image. But usually it's in the midground or the foreground. Um, typically. And the background, again, just take note, again, if I'm looking at the length from here to here, the background sits where? It's way up there. It's high. So to create depth, everyone wants to know, everyone asks me, well, how do I create depth in my piece? Because usually what happens is you sit down and you're drawing and everything's flat. You've got your garden laid out. You've got all of the detail. You have all of the perennials and all of the annuals and all of the sunflowers and all of the this, but everything's all lined up. And then we're actually taking several centuries back in art history before they figured out things like this. This is essentially called atmospheric perspective. And you can look that up. But what that means is atmospheric perspective means on a flat surface, we're going to create the illusion of things going forward and backward. And the way that that's handled is partially how it's placed on the page. So that the things that are far away go up. Things that are in the midground, you know, you got a barn you want to draw, you know, and then flowers in the front, a field. Things that are in the midground, the barn would go in the middle. You know, the hills are in the background, they're high. And then the flower field would go in the front. That's closest to you on the road. So it's lowest on the bottom. So just understanding the placement of those items and that usually all pictures that have any sense of depth will have those three components. Now, you're gonna say to me, well, Carrie, I went into my garden and I, it, it, everything's just right there. Okay, so your view has changed. That means what's happened is instead of having a view that extends, you know, extends way out here, your view is only this. So what that means is you're gonna miss the background. What you will have is a foreground and a midground, right? But you will still have at least two elements. You get to decide as the looker, as the observer, and as the photo taker, and I do encourage taking photos um, of it to work from the photo, or if you want to work in life, that's fine, but just understanding like how far back am I seeing? Can I see the mountains? Can I see the hills? Can I see down the road 20 miles or can I see down the road one mile? Do you see how that changes the depth that you need to right? In the components that you're going to have. So if you're only seeing a mile down the road, you're probably only going to have a foreground and a midground, right? That background just doesn't exist. And this is called a deep, a deep um, shallow or a deep field or a shallow field. And that's up to you. You will find what, um, what works for you, but understanding that translates to where you put it on the page was a big turning point for me. I was like, oh, my mountains shouldn't be in the middle. My mountains shouldn't be in the middle. They should be 
up. They should be up the page, right? Because that's what makes sense. That helps the eye perceive as, oh, it's going back. Okay. So that's the first part. Um, and there's lots of other interesting things. Typically, now this is the, this is where, you know, just like gardening is not straightforward, right? Am I right, gardeners? It's not straightforward. It's not like, here's the answer and you get the answer and now you know how to do it, right? We just learned that. Um, art is the same way. Typically, what happens for that atmospheric perspective is that in the foreground, the things that are closest to you, you get the most contrast and the most detail. So you get contrast just means lights and darks. So you get the highest level of contrast, the highlight of the leaves, the darkness of the shadow really shows up in that foreground, which is where the bottom of the page, the mid ground, it's all kind of like mid value so that, um, you know, it's like a mid gray we're working in pencil. So it's like a mid gray, the, the foreground that has the contrast is like black and white, right? Black and white. I see all this contrast. The eye loves contrast. It is like, Ooh, what's happening there? Mid ground is sort of just kind of gray and, you know, a few, a little bit of, you know, maybe a, a mid gray and a dark gray, but not much more. You don't get a lot of detail. And then the background, which sits highest is light and fuzzy. It's fuzzy. There's no clarity of your drawing, no line, no detail. It's light. It's a smudge. It's just a smudge. It's a smudge. Typically that's what happens when we teach landscape drawing, that's what we do. But now again, I'm gonna warn you because I've gone through um, several art classes and art school and graduate school. And this is my problem with some of our formal education is they say, that's it. And then you go out in your garden and you go, that's not going on at all. <laughs> Why? Okay, that's not happening at all. Here's what I need you to do. First of all, we need to understand value so that you can draw whatever it is that you're seeing, because it is true sometimes if you have a deep field of view, but it is not true if you have a shallow view of field, okay? What you need to do, or what I'd like to encourage you to do, to learn how to do, is first of all, see values. Value is the lightness and the darkness of something. And chances are, if you can do this, if you can learn this trick in this trade and practice it, it's a five second exercise every day. So if you can squint your eyes, this is the way the old masters did it. It is still tried and true. It is still working, right? If you squint your eyes and look at something, look at your clothing and say, is it light in value, the lightness or darkness? Is it light? Like white would be the lightest. Is it light or like beige, right? Is light, is it medium? Is it mid, right? That would be somewhere any of, you know, sign the colors red or green, you know, or is it dark? Dark are gonna be like navy blue, purple, right? Is it light, is it mid or is it dark? Squint your eyes really quickly and look around your room even. Can you see? Like I'm looking at my doors are white. That's light. My wall is green. It's mid. My carpet is light. My jeans are dark, right? So the more that you can be able to see three values, light, mid, and dark is what you need to make something look real and make it look inviting and dynamic. So my, my exercise to my students is I say, when you are at a stoplight, only at a stoplight, not when you're driving, but when you're at a stoplight or when you're in the bathroom, if you can sit down, squint your eyes and do a five second study and say, squint your eyes and say, is it my towel? Is it light, medium or dark? My shower curtain, is it light, medium or dark? My carpet, is it light, medium or dark? My shirt, is it light, medium or dark, right? Five seconds, you're not doing anything else anyway. You're at the light or you're in the bathroom. Um, the more that you do that, the more adept you are training your eye to see and recognize and incorporate value into 
your drawing and your planting and your planting so that when you go to pick out flowers or shrubs or whatever, that you can see, well, I've got, um, you know, I have these bushes back here. I have evergreens back here. Those are dark, right? And then I want, I need something else. I want, I want some variety. So I'm going to add something medium. What's a shrub that could be medium, right? And then what's a flower that could be light? Do you see what's happened there? So it's, it's sort of now, instead of having dark green with dark green with dark green, you have expanded your value just by understanding, I can do that. I can do that. I can pick things that have dark, medium, and light, right? That's one way of helping to expand um, your visual designery, designing for your garden. Your designers, who knew? You're gardeners, but you're designers and artists as well, right? The other thing is to look for shape, right? We don't want everything, well, it depends on the kind of gardener you are. <laughs> <laughs> Some people like everything perfectly symmetrical. I want a tree here and a tree and a tree and a tree and a bush and a bush and a bush. Some people like a variety of a bouquet, right? When you go to the store and you pick out a bouquet, you want variety in there, right? So, um, but looking at the shape and the size, and I know Janet has talked about that before. She's talked to me about it before as a gardener. So I know she's talked to you guys about it as too. But the, the size, the height, right? Looking for something different heights, tall, mid, ground, you know, um, some, some variety there. And the shape of them, well, does it sprawl out or is it perfectly succinct as like a round thing? Is it a tree that flowers? You know, um, looking at some of those things, variety is your friend, variety is your friend. So having those two things is already gonna be very helpful for you. As we're moving into the sketching part of it, okay, I'm going to use the picture, the photo that Steve supplied, um, because I went through, he gave me several choices, and I said, this one has everything I want to talk to you about, okay? Not that the other ones weren't great, he is a fabulous photographer and an even nicer man, and that's hard to find in today's day and age, but um I liked this one because it was like, ah, yes, this one has everything that I'd, I'd like to talk to you about, okay? So I'm gonna switch over. Let me share my screen, okay, to show you the picture. It was up on the page, but let's take, um, let's take a, a peek at it right here. And then um, if somebody could just let me know if it is showing up for you. You're all set. Yep, got it, okay. So um, when we're looking at when we're looking at this photograph, and you can see my mouse moving too, yes, mouse. Yes, we can. Up here? It's, okay, it's good. Little, but Thank it's you. there. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So what I'm talking about is first of all, okay, the biggest thing we notice, the focal point. I would say the focal point is this tree. I would say the focal point. Now we've got a we've got like a little competition happening over here, because over here we've got this really cool gazebo, right? He's really neat and he's interesting, but the focal point is the tree. And why would I say the focal point is the tree? It's important to know where your focal point is because you get to pick where that is when you're viewing it. Any guesses? Anybody chiming in on? or just unmute or you know, chime in on chat? Color, it's light. Ah, the value. Yeah, so value and color are different. Very, very good though. Um, value means the lightness and darkness. It does not, it has green, but like it doesn't have, we're really gonna look at it as the value. It's the lightest thing. Squint your eyes with me. It's the lightest thing in that picture, yes? Lightest, aside from there's like this little stone guy over here, but really he's the lightest thing and he's almost dead center. And he happens to be one of the biggest shapes, right? What else he has is the highest level of contrast, dark and light right next to each other, okay? Contrast is where you want, you want your focal point to have contrast because it draws the eye in. Light and dark right next to each other, biggest shape, um, almost dead center. So this I'm gonna claim as the focal point, 
Okay. You can also notice when you squint your eyes for me again. Now this one happens to be in call in full color. I've made a black and white version that I'm going to show you in a minute. But when you squint your eyes, can you see that up here, all of this top part, this is practically the top third, right? If I'm drawing a line, this is practically the top third. So if I go up from here down, here down, all of this area is dark, except for this tree. <laughs> but that's all dark, right? Now I just told you for traditional value, what's the, what's the background supposed to be? It's highest on the page and it's supposed to be light, right? Because it's furthest away. But here, that's not true because we don't have the depth. The sh we don't have a deep view. We have a medium to shallow view. So it changes the rules. All you need to do is say, where is the dark? That's all you have to do. Where's the dark? Can you tell me where is the dark? Squint your eyes. That's the trick. The trick is take away that is the best, the best thing. Squint your eyes. The dark is the top upper third, right? Now, if we look in here, if you can follow my little tiny mouse, right? My little tiny mouse, all of this is sitting where on the page? This is all in the middle, right? And it has the most interesting stuff going on. It has the detail, it has variety, it has this man-made structure, it has this handmade structure. There's so much going on. Different shapes for the, look, this one, these leaves are coming down like little fingers. These ones look like cucumbers. Um, these look, you know, there's so many different shapes happening here. Oh, this is a repetition, look right here. And then it repeats over here, right? So much is happening. Little tiny circular buds, some kind of clovery thing, right? Um, and then these pots too, with these big, beautiful geraniums, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. The geraniums. Yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm an artist first and a gardener, like fifth. So, <laughs> um, but all of the interest is in the mid ground. Remember? Didn't I just tell you that? Yeah, I did. Okay, and then down here, look, what's happening in the lower third? Yes, there's a pot, but what's happening in the lower third? Three quarters of the lower third is grass. Is that exciting to look at? Is it important? Yes, but is it exciting to look at? Not really, and it doesn't have to be. But what I want you to note is again, squint your eyes, it's the lightest part. Okay, so your job is this. Your job is this. Ask yourself, you need those three components, the foreground, the midground, and the back. And your job is going to be, where's the light, where's the mid, and where's the dark? Okay, for this image, the light was at the bottom. It was the grass. The exciting, contrasty, everything was kind of mid, mid value. But everything exciting, the contrast, the focal point, everything was in the midground. And then the top was really mostly dark. Yeah. So let me switch over. I'm going to show you it now in black and white and see if you can see it in black and white, because black and white is always easier to see than color. Your eye loves color and it gets it gets like tantalized. It's like, oh, there's color and I love it. And I just want to do the color. And it also does that for the detail. It says, oh, there's so much detail. I just want to jump in and draw every little leaf. But that makes a bad drawing. <laughs> so we're going to look at it in black and white. See if you can find, just for yourself, can you find the light, the mid, and the dark? We already talked about it, but watch how helpful it is to do it in black and white. The beauty of the 21st century is, um, are we still 21st? Oh. Gosh, I lost a year and now my brain is gone. Um, you can use your phone. You can use your phone. So look through your phone. You're going to take, you're going to look through your phone and switch over editor to make it black and white. Okay. Before you start sketching, because then you're going to see, does it have a light, a mid, a dark, right? And, and you can change the composition. 
where do you want the focal point? Do you want it in the middle or do you want it to the side? There's some really good composition choices. It doesn't have to be in the middle, okay? Watch black and white, okay. So here's the same photo in black and white. Can you see now when you squint the dark up top, the interesting mids, they're mid, a medium value, think of like a medium gray or brown. And then this part, you're like, well, that still looks kind of medium, but it's the lightest of everything there. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yay, nay, thumbs up. We, you know, we can chat? see it. Steve's shaking his head and going, Cal, I don't even realize sometimes why I put things into the pictures that I do. Yes, that's the artistic eye. And it takes years, Steve will tell you, it takes years to, to, to develop that. You have trained your eye to be able to see it in a snap. But for all of us, we can learn how to see it when it's explained properly, right? So here it is, right? Here's the darks. All this is dark. Even over here is really dark. Look, you're like, it's a gazebo. I want to draw the whole gazebo because gazebos are cool. What do you see of that gazebo? You see the front line and that, and you see the top. You don't see anything back there where my finger's covering. It's all what? It's just dark. What it is, that observation, you have to draw what you see. You have to draw what you see, okay? Um, so again, very little detail in the background. What I do see is I see a little bit of lights coming through. I have the coolest, the coolest way to show you how to do that in a snap. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. It's amazing. You're gonna wanna draw nothing but backgrounds. <laughs> okay, are we ready? I'm gonna start actually with the drawing. So. Um, Actually, let's do this first. So here's Steve's, I'm gonna put Steve's picture up. Let me switch back over. It takes me just a hot second. I'm not quite as fast as, as Steve and Janet are yet, but here's Steve's picture, okay? And how can I do this? Maybe I'll put it off to the side. There we go. I'm gonna do it this way because that fits on my camera better. And typically, so this is what we would do. And I'm gonna do it in marker so you can see it. Now, this is not what I want you to do. I'm gonna show you the flaw first, okay? Stick with me, I'm gonna show you the flaw. Typically you'd come in and you go, there's a big tree, there's a big tree, and then there's a bush over here. This is all dark. This comes, you know, this comes like this. There's a pot over here and there's a gazebo over here and it goes like this and then that somehow. Oh yeah, there's a little tiny thing that I wanna pay attention to up here. There's a weather vane. So that's important. Oh, there's a flower pot here, right? Um, and then you'd say, okay, but can you see how everything looks flat without the value? Yeah? Does that look like a, an interesting sketch? No, no, not really. Still Everything's on the same level, and right? It looks like how we draw a cat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's an outline drawing, not not a um, not a rendering, right? It's an outline drawing, but you get the idea. Now, watch. If I go ahead, I'm going to use a magic little tool. This magic little tool is called a graphite stick. Can I hold it up for you? It's called a graphite stick. It is what's in your pencil lead without the wood all around it, and it comes like a little a little stick. I love these. These are wonderful. But watch if I if I go in here and I have everything the same value. I didn't make any value changes. You know there's value changes. And this is what typically people that are learning how to draw do. They just kind of like lay in up with your pencil, right? But you lay in and everything. Now it looks even more flat, right? Does that look like that? No, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't. So everyone comes in with their pencil and they do this, right? But you do it all in the same pressure and all in the same value. And then you end up getting just like a page of gray. Yeah, most of us do that. Don't feel bad, don't feel bad. If it has not been explained to you, if it has not been explained, I just told my first, my darling son, my first grader, he said, I don't want to go to school every day. He said, all, learning all this stuff is tiring. And I said, he's only been in school three days. <laughs> 
And I said, honey, I said, if you knew everything, you wouldn't be in first grade. I said, you'd be in second grade, right? You'd be in second grade. I said, so you're going to learn. You have to learn, right? So don't feel bad if you're like, well, yeah, that's what I would have done. Don't feel bad. Everyone does that until someone shows you different, right? That's why you're here. Someone showing you different. So now watch, let's switch over. Typically, that's what we do. We draw the outline and then you'd fill it in and you would make sure you got all the detail. Okay. Every leaf, every blade of grass. Oh, that's my favorite. Every blade of grass, right? Let me switch over. I'm telling you that's the opposite. The opposite. Did you hear me? The opposite of what you want to do to get an interesting sketch. Okay. So watch you go in and you do every, every blade of grass, right? Look at every blade of grass. There's grass everywhere and it would take you forever. Every blade of grass everywhere. Are you getting tired? I'm getting tired. <laughs> but that's actually not what we see. So watch this. This is the sketch I did last night just to show you it done, to show you it done. And then we're gonna do it together, okay? Are we, we still got time? This is the sketch that I did. Yes, you just keep going. This is the sketch that I did of Steve's photo last night. Okay. Can you see how that has value? All of the, all of the detail is in the mid ground. The bottom is lightest. Look at the difference between that and that. Right. And you're in luck because I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Okay to get the most enjoyment and the most success out of your drawing, right? Look at that background. Aren't you intrigued? Oh, it's so much fun. I can't wait to show you. Okay, so I wanted to show you it done so you can see, okay, does that look, yeah, that looks pretty, pretty close. I would say this needs to be a little bit lighter. It was getting late and I was tired. <laughs> it needs to be a little bit lighter, but could you see that already? Could you see that already that this tree is a little bit lighter than that tree? Yeah, already. Could you see that? Yeah. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Good, good, good. That's a step. You've already made a huge leap in art, in your sketching. You've already made a huge leap with one explanation of value. You were able to look at mine and go, that tree's not light enough. By the way, you're always, it's always easiest to see everybody else's faults. That's why you should ask a very trusted friend about your own faults. <laughs> Don't ask somebody who's going to tell you what's wrong with it. And that could be your spouse. If your spouse is going to go, well, this is wrong and this, go to your best friend. Okay. Find a partner that's going to go, I think that can be honest and truthful with you, but not discouraging. Okay. We all need that. We all need that. Um, you were my friend right there. You said, you know what? That tree needs to be a little bit lighter. And I went, yeah, it does. Cool. I can fix that. I can fix that. That's a fixable item, right? If you are concrete and encouraging with your, your help, you can fix it 99% of the time, 99%. Let's get going. Are you ready? Okay. So I'm gonna switch back over. I do wanna tell you, I wanna tell you, I have a couple of tools. Now I'm not gonna use that beautiful graphite stick. I use him all the time. He will get this job done faster for you. Here he is, graphite stick. You order it online or in the art store, General's Kimberly graphic stick or graphite, sorry, graphite. I keep saying the wrong word, graphite stick, okay? Generals is the brand I use. They have other brands, but they're big and clunky and they leave streaks. Generals does not leave streaks. Generals Kimberly Graphite Stick. Yeah, on Amazon. They come as a two pack or they come as a 10 pack. I teach, so I get the 10, but you might only want the two. It's great because you know why? You can lay in that whole dark area in two seconds. If you use your pencil,
I'm still laying in the dark. <laughs> Do you see how long it took me to lay in the dark? If I use this, I go swipe, 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 done. Efficiency, efficiency. If you are able to be more efficient in your drawing, you're more likely to do it. That's the truth. That's from 13 years of teaching drawing. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'll switch back over. I wanna show you my special tools. My special tool is a number 2B pencil. That's a regular pencil. Now I happen to have the fancy drawing one, but it's still just a 2B pencil. It's the pencil you use to write with. It's the pencil they're using in school, just a 2B pencil, okay? Contrary to popular belief, you don't want it super duper pointy sharp, okay? Um, because we're gonna use it this way. We're gonna use it instead of holding it like this, for the first part, we're gonna use it like this. We're gonna hold it differently. Hold it differently, okay? Um, then I also have an old t-shirt. Can you see how dirty he is? An old t-shirt. Cotton is the name of the game. I know we all love Jersey knit because it's so comfy and stretchy, but Jersey knit has plastic in it. And plastic is not gonna do the thing that you need it to do. So this is this was my husband's old undershirt that's 100% cotton. You could also cut up, you know, a pillowcase, a uh, uh, whatever, um, but it needs to have that stretch in it too. So a cotton t-shirt. Got grandkids? Cut up the old things that they can't wear anymore, right? They spilled on it. They got macaroni and cheese and ketchup on it. Um, cut up a section off of that, like 100% cotton, okay? No 90%, you know, spandex and whatever, 100% cotton. He's my blending tool. He's my blending tool. So I have a number two pencil, a blending tool, and I have an eraser. An eraser, any eraser will work. You could also use the eraser right off your pencil. That'll work, that's it, three tools and, uh, and paper, <laughs> and paper. My favorite eraser is this one. It comes from the office store because this whole tube is eraser, so it never runs out. The whole tube is eraser. Here, I only get, look, I only get like that much eraser and then it's dead. And then it's like, ah, what do you do when your eraser runs out? Pitch, right? Goes in the, it goes in the drawer that never gets used again. This one, this eraser will last me probably my whole life because it, it is filled, it's a filled eraser. Um, so this is the eraser that I'm gonna use today. And you hold it, the reason I like this over this is you hold it like a pencil. See how that's much more, that's easier to get in there, right? This, I, ooh, that's harder, right? That's harder. Not that this doesn't have a good purpose, it does. But for drawing, we're actually gonna draw with our eraser. What? I know, you're gonna love it. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> Did I lose anybody? I'm a little bit quirky. I don't know if they told you that. Well, Sorry, you're finding out. Lose anybody you're yeah. finding it out now. <laughs> I think Steve has lost it, but in a good way. <laughs> Come join in the insanity. Okay, um, so I'm going to switch back over, and I want to help you again, just with a few, a few um, basic things to do it. We're going to do it right together. Okay, you can just watch me if you want. I think they said it is being recorded, right? So if you wanted to go back, you could Probably. maybe watch it. Yeah. Is it recorded? Yeah. yeah. So you could go back and watch it to try to do it like with me in real time. You can always pause. This is the beauty of internet. You can pause it and go, okay, what is she doing now? Oh, 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 what is she doing now? Right. Um, so if you just want to watch it, that's great. If you want to jump in and if you're feeling the gusto and you're like, I can do this, then come on and join in. Okay. We're going to go step by step. It does take a little bit of time. Demo is the most wonderful way to learn art. Ex proper explanation, proper tools, proper demo of what to do with those tools with the explanation is the key to good art making. It takes some time, so bear with me. I will try to go you know, as quickly as I can, but not so fast that you get whiplash. <laughs> okay, so let's switch over. Okay, um, the first thing that we're gonna do, the first thing that I'm gonna do, and you can see both, yeah? 
Okay. I have a little table. I have a little table. Um, I saw somebody ask, where do I teach? I teach at BBAC. It's the Birmingham Arts Center, um, Birmingham Bluefield Arts Center. And I also just got hired at OCC, Oakland Community College. So you can, you can take classes with me, either of those places. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do or we can have something special too sometime, Carrie, right? What's that? Or we can set up something special sometime too. Of course, of course. Yeah, I do pri I do workshops and private lessons and all that junk too. Right. So I've used a red pencil and this is really, really helpful. So I've I put it down the middle, a vertical line down the middle. Because now what do you see instantaneously? What do you notice from left side to right side? What do you see? A lot more contrast on the left side. Ah, yep. So you're noticing the contrast. I like that. The biggest thing I noticed is the gazebo is touching that left edge, right? The gazebo is touching that left edge and it's not touching the top. So it's a little bit down, right? It's a little bit down. And I also noticed the tree, my focal point is mostly, it's near the middle, but it's mostly to the right, right? So I wouldn't put my tree dead center. I need to move him slightly to the right. So over here, I'm gonna do a halfway point, a really light one, a really light halfway point. Can you see it? So that now this matches this, okay? By the way, this is all, we're all working off of a photograph today. Um, we're working off of a photograph but all of this is transferable to when you're in, if you want to draw sitting in your garden, um, if you want to draw sitting in your garden, oh, what did I do with it? What you're going to do is either look through your camera for these things and ask yourself, you have to ask yourself questions. I love this because people go, artists are just talented. That is completely false. <laughs> artists are, that is completely false. Artists are skilled and they're scientists, just like gardeners or scientists. Artists are asking themselves questions almost every single second they're sitting down to do something. Is it in the dead center? Right? Ever seen somebody do this? Wonder what they're doing? This is their midline. They're holding it up is their midline for whatever the view is they're looking at. They're holding it up as the midline and they're assessing, is it to the left or is it to the right of my midline? Cool, huh? Why is your eye closed? Did you see I did that? Why is my eye closed? Because we're all pirates. No way, you got binocular vision. Binocular vision gives you depth perception. When you're drawing on 2D, you are making it flat. You are making it 2D on your page. Do you need depth perception? If you were gonna sculpt your garden, yeah, you'd keep both eyes open. But if you're gonna go to a piece of paper that's flat and the world is like this, by closing your eye, you have now made the world flat. You have removed depth perception. Okay. That's why you close your one eye. It literally physiologically, it removes depth perception and it makes your view out of one eye 2d, which is exactly what your page is. Okay. That's why they're doing this. I, I get to see the midline. I'm going to check, is it to the left or to the right? Okay. And then with the one eye closed, you're making it more flat. So you can see, we want it flat because you can see the shapes easier that way, okay? So here we go. My tree is, is mostly to the right. The very, oh, and you also need this if you're gonna work outside. It's so <laughs> lovely. <laughs> it can also go this way. It's so fantastic. It's a viewfinder. It's a viewfinder. So look, I'm gonna hold it up. So it gives, why? Here's the world. There's trees and there's a library over there and there's a garden over here and there's pars over here. 
And your perception, you have peripheral per perception that takes you all the way out here. Look, I'm stretching my arms back. Your peripheral vision goes all the way back here. Your page is like this. So you are taking in more input than you could possibly put on the page. You have to reconcile that. How do you reconcile it? You put a border around it and you say, this is all I wanna see. And then you can say, there's my midline. Is that tree to the left or is it to the right of the midline? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. If you don't have the border, it's not that you can't do it. It makes it harder because you're taking in more input than you have space to put on the page. How do you reconcile that? Give it a border. Didn't we just talk about borders, Janet? Steve, just talked about borders. Borders realized, in a new way. We never realized we were going to do borders. Uh, it, carry it right through, which is wonderful. See, look at that. Happy coincidences. Okay, so when I'm looking here, I'm going to switch back over. Give me just a moment. Sorry. I'm good, but I'm not fast. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, I'm actually going to start with this part down here, and I'm going to say along, watch, along this line. Can you see that? That's the, let me do it in marker. Let me do it in marker so you can see it. That is the length of my view. And when I look at that, the grass starts about there. Now, how much is that? That's about one, two. I'm going to call it just shy of a third of the way up. So over here, if I go one, two, three, it's about here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to say it's about a third. So look, a third and a third, right? That's where the grass started. It's estimating. Don't get scared. You're going, no, you're using numbers. I can't use numbers. It's estimating, okay? And then I'm going to watch what happens. It's mostly a little bit of a curve, and then it starts going down towards that middle line. So I'm going to go here. It bumps up a tiny bit. It curves down to touch the pencil. And then look at, can you see this little triangle? Can you see him? So now I just have to make sure that that triangle, again, it doesn't go to the corner, right? It goes like about here. That's where it ends, right? So I put a little dot. I don't know if you can see that. I put a little tiny dot. And then this, from here to here, I have a start and a stop. So this is gonna go down here. Do I have my grass line in? Yep, got it in, right? Cool, moving on. Now I'm gonna put in my gazebo. So my gazebo, um, I'm actually gonna start with the top. He's gonna go, again, there's a little part up here. It doesn't touch, right? It doesn't touch. There's black up there. It doesn't touch, so it's flat. Oh, actually, there's a little bit of an angle there. This angle, I'm looking at the angle of that. If you can't see the angle, if you can't see the angle, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna lay it down. You're gonna lay something on it, okay? Oops, he keeps rolling away. So now watch, where does it intersect the top line? To get the angle correct, I'm gonna go, it intersects the top line there, right? And then it touches the grass down there. So now I have, look at, I have a start and a stop to get the angle of the gazebo. Oop, whoops, that was too steep. Did I cry? This is what I tell Milo all the time. Did I cry? And he says, goodness, no. Did I cry? No way. Now, is it that long? No way, it's not that long. But now I have the proper, if I do this all the way down, right? See how this is going all the way down to the grass? And now I just have to go, okay, well, it cuts over about here. Cuts over about, about that far down, right? And now I can just erase this part because that he's not important anymore. But now, guess what? I had the angle correct and I didn't have to draw it and erase it and draw it and erase it and draw it and erase it. Again, notice this part, this part has a little bit of an angle and look at, it's actually going down, right? So this part comes over just a little bit down and then this part comes over just a little bit down and this is much more shallow. Look at you guys, woo! 
I got the top of that and like super fast, right? Super duper fast, no tears, right? No tears, it's looking pretty good. And then I'm gonna look at it for a second. So now I'm gonna look and I'm gonna say, okay, there's, there's a wide part there. This is parallel, so it goes that way. This is, you know, there's a line there, there's a line there. There's a, um, you know, a board right there. There's a board coming off this one. It does not stick out. Look, it is not in line with, right? If I do, this is technically called a plumb line. If you drop this down, the plumb line, that comes from plumbing, by the way. Um, it's how, you know, what they do to find, find the center. Um, but it's inside a little bit. So I'm going to move them inside a little bit, right? And then this gets obstructed. This gets obstructed by the plant. So I'm just going to stop it a little short because I can see that plant is getting a little bit crazy up there. And then from this part, oh, he comes all the way down. Excuse me. He comes all the way down. And then again, look, there's some obstruction. There's some plant there. So right now I'm just going to do like a little, a little fuzzy, little fuzzy plant. Okay. Along the bottom. And then this line, again, I'm going to look at the angle. The angle, can you see the angle of my pencil? It's going slightly up. So it's gonna go slightly up, okay? And then there's, again, this plant is kind of in our way, okay? And then I'm gonna do just a couple lines because I know there's a couple lines. I wanna add a couple lines. In the back side, I can see there's a dark, there's a, a almost black, right? There's a dark thing coming down here. There's a dark one coming down here. I'm not gonna worry too much about it because it is just a sketch and this is all gonna be mostly dark. I also really, really loved these, but I'm just gonna put them in as soft use in these rather than doing detail. Remember I said less detail is better. So um, I'm gonna put those in. Now over here, I've got my, um, this is where this little thing is. Oh, let me put my midway point again. Okay, because again, it's important to see how far away am I from the midline. Oh, you know what? And he needs to go closer. Did I make a mistake? You betcha. What did I do when I made a mistake? Did I go, oh, I just can't do this. This is too hard. This is ridiculous. I can't. Carrie, you're, 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 you're a delight, Carrie. <laughs> I wish more gardeners would say, I just need to, I need a, I need a, a fuzzy thing there. I need a fuzzy I need thing. Around there, right? Rather than I need saying, a fuzzy thing. This is the way, again, I think we're tying these two things together because drawing, we're going to start, drawing has its own visual language that could be adaptable for gardening. I need a fuzzy thing right there. I need a short fuzzy thing. I need a tall spiky thing. That's how we call it in art. It's its own language. It has its own descriptive language, okay? And it's a descriptive language. Just what you said, Janet, fuzzy. Yeah. It's not, I need, I need something small. Well, that didn't tell you anything. I need something small that spreads out that's fuzzy. Do you know what I'm talking about now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you do, right? Not. So it's a descriptive language that could be helpful for both artists and gardeners. And uh, okay. and the guard the gardeners in the group are are us uh, at least some of them are are thinking now okay it's time for us to get out into the garden I think we want to set up a second uh, second session already okay right? uh, okay because this is this is fascinating it's, it's very fascinating to me and the fact that you're drawing in what what drew your eye the most first what 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 uh, what well what I I started most. yeah. The, this is, I started here and you're right. This is my focal point. So I could have, I'm actually going to go over to him probably next, but I started here because, and this is the reason why this is good to know because it's on two edges. It touches, it literally touches that edge and it's straight. They're straight edged. So when it's straight edged, this is all kind of like wobbly, which is a little bit harder to do as a beginning drawer, like to get the wobbles. So, um, but I started with that straight edge because it's touching this edge, right? And it's gonna touch over there. And I started here because it's touching that edge and it ends at an edge. 
an edge means a line. So it ends on this border on this side and it ends on this side. Okay. So those are the logical choices because I have a start and a stop that I can see clearly. If I just do the tree, it's like, well, where does it end? I don't know. Uh -huh. But once I get all the things built up to it adjacently, then I'll be able to go, oh yeah, that's where that goes. That's where that goes. That's where that goes. Right. So okay. we always work our way like adjacent. I wouldn't start here and then jump over here. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And it sounds yeah. a lot like um, we were talking with a gardener on Thursday night who wants to redo her garden. I said, well, why don't you start over there by the trellis? and do something there and let the garden expand outward from there. You're grounding yourself with the, the piece that makes sense and, and gives everything else a, mm -hmm. a, a space and proportion. That's really, that's very neat. Yes, and I'm sorry, I see we are at time and I didn't even get to the funnest stuff, but. <laughs> well, that, 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 just lets us, that just lets us take another, well, another we have, try at this because we, we have the ability to do that. We can well, talk to the group and say, what's a well, good time? The chat is demanding that we, we uh, that we do what this. What we've done again. before is we learn as we do this. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and you can't cover every. It, it, Good. I know. So let's let's it's do great. let's do a just drawing session. And uh, well, well, I'd like to finish this piece with them so I can show them if that's okay with everyone. Check the chat and see if that's okay. And because um, there's, I mean, there's so many things we can do about drawing, but um, with this piece in particular, we're practicing drawing a real garden and getting those pieces, all of the pieces that I mentioned, like we, into play. We, we want you to finish that piece. Um, we'll, okay. let, we'll let people go because we are recording. We'll put it up yep. and people will get it. But rest assured, those of you who are, are anxious to get out or have something uh, calling you to do, this is, will be recorded so you can catch up with it and you, we can catch up with Carrie again in the, the next we session will. too. We will. So go Wonderful. ahead. That's so enjoyable. Back Thank you, you so much for joining me. I hope you got something to take away at least today. I needed, so, so. I needed myself. No, keep on, keep on going. Yep. Go ahead. Keep on showing us. I'm, usually there are people that will stay 10 or 15 minutes and yes. oh, okay. questions. So you yep. Oh, I can, you want me to keep going? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. There, there are people saying, yes, please keep going. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. I'm, I'm here for the, for the duration here, um, for a bit. Um, okay. Also I get side, you know, I get sidetracked sometimes I talk with my hands and I'm excited. So Okay, um, so now I'm now I'm drawing in this guy, and again, so he's gonna he's gonna be kind of like curly Q. Remember we talked about like, you know, it's it's kind of soft and fuzzy. I see my camera is having trouble, like actually. No, we we're we're seeing fine. Can you see it okay? Yeah. Okay. And then there's this really beautiful leaf. I love that leaf right up top. And then there's one that comes off this way, and there's some that come off this way. And there's another one that comes down that way. And then there's those, again, there's like these little clusters, but for sketching, I'm just gonna make them, I'm gonna make them big, right? I'm, I, they're white. They're like, I'm not sure what that is. It might be another geranium, but they're white in that little pot. On here, again, I'm just gonna go up and down, right? And a, a few little curves to indicate that the shadow is on that side, the shadow's on that side, okay? Um, and here's what we're going to do first. After we start getting going crazy over here, I'm going to lightly, now look, look at the way I'm holding my pencil. Instead of holding it like this, let me flip over so you can see it very clearly. For the grass, I'm going to lay in the grass. This is the way that I'm holding my pencil. Not like this, I'm holding it like this. And look at this finger is very helpful. And I go side to side to side to side. Okay, watch as I do it, but I can go really light with my pressure. The more horizontal your pencil is and the lighter your pressure. So when you, when you write like this, you end up getting a medium pressure. Even if you're trying to go light, you have to hold your pencil differently. So I'm holding it. I flipped it around my fingers on top and I'm just going to go light, 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 light. Who knew you had to hold your pencil different for a different tone? Well, now you do, right? If you flip it over, you will get a lighter tone. So let me go ahead and do that. That way, at least you get to see some of the, um, the grass going in. So look, see how I'm holding it, right? And I'm using, by the way, I'm using my ring finger sort of as, as a holder. See him? He's, he's kind of as a little holder or a brace. 
And again, I can go really, really light. And I've sort of switched my hand around really light in here, just kind of side to side diagonal. Because this is all we really care about for the grass is it's a light tone. I, look, I don't even care that the middle line is there because guess what? I'm going to blend it out. Okay. All right. So now that's a really light tone. I'm going to grab that rag, that rag that I told you about. And when I blend, anytime I blend, so what I did was I wrapped it, tried to find a not crazy spot. I wrapped it around my finger. See how I did that? So I made a little tool. I wrapped it around my finger. Okay. And the reason I wrapped it around my finger is this is a small space. If it was a big space, then I just, I just use them fine. Anytime you're blending with your cloth, you're going to blend in a circle because it's pushing the graphite into the page in all of these ways. Okay. So I don't want to go side to side because then that only hits the top ridge. Your paper, your page is porous. And when you push it in a circle, it's pushing it into the nooks and crannies. Think of an English muffin. It's pushing it into the nooks and crannies of your page. So that look at how, look at the difference between where I blended and where I didn't blend. See how that starts getting really soft. So I'm always going in a circle when I'm blending. Anytime I'm blending and you can blend blending is like one of the most relaxing things you can do. You should just do blending pages when you're stressed out, just set down a patch and blend it out. Cause it's so relaxing. And, um, so notice again, so there's, there's that light value. When you squint your eyes, does that value look approximately the same, the value, not the color. This is Brown. I know this is gray but the value is approximately the same. It's light, right? Yeah, that's a light value, okay? Um, and then now I'm gonna come back. And again, I'm, I, I see that there's, um, there's like a little thing and there's some stones up here. So I'm gonna add some stones, right? Up there, right there, boop. See, there's a little line and with some stones. And then past that, it's all dark. So watch what I'm gonna do. You're gonna go, what is she doing? This is all dark, so I don't care. I'm just gonna make it dark. Why is she doing that? I can't see what's happening, but we don't need to see. We really don't, because guess what? It's not in the picture. So now I'm going in between the rungs. That's magical. <laughs> right? You don't need to see what's going on. If you don't see the background, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Ain't no thing. Now for this part, there's a little bit, right? There's a little bit. So I'm going to put, again, look at how I'm holding my pencil. I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it way down at the end and I'm going side to side, right? Way down at the end, side to side. Cause there's some value in here. There's some value in inside the, that, right? Oh, and this, he keeps going over there. So there's another, there's probably another one over there. Okay. And look already, doesn't that look pretty, pretty darn similar? Pretty close, right? Again, up here, I'm just gonna do some lines for, cause there is texture happening here. And then I'm just gonna do, you know, some lines over and then this one changes. So they're gonna go on an angle, right? Something like that. Oh, the weather vane, don't forget the weather vane. I know somebody's going to be like, that weather vane, she missed it. It always happens in class for me. You missed the weather vane. Well, okay. But I can come back to it, right? And again, he's kind of mid. He's mid. These little guys, I love these little guys. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put them in because I think they're super fun. Now, it is an identical, right? It is an identical, but it gives you a sense, imply that there is something happening there, right? You don't have to have everything perfect. That's part of the, the issue when you're drawing um, from life or from a garden. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to give the implication that some kind of texture is there. So I just did that with little V's and U's and it works, no problem, right? And maybe if you feel that you need to do that in some part of your drawing, that maybe it's telling you you need to do that in some part of your garden too. 
Yeah. Yes, for sure, for sure. So again, um, now what are we gonna do? We're gonna come over here. I'm gonna pay attention to this little line is coming just almost at the top of, just almost at the top. Oh, and I'm, I'm a little scrunched in here. I see that there is, this is some sort of a structure here that has a little triangle thing. And then there's this lovely, I love when you make these, Janet, these, um, you know, grape vine or, you know, viney wreathy um, structures. So I can see that kind of going over. So I'm gonna try to get him, but most of, most of what's down below, most of what's down below, and I can see I left that a little too high. Most of what's down below, I, I really can't tell, right? It's medium. So it's medium and it looks like it's kind of, I'm gonna go vertical because it looks like it's mostly vertical and it's medium. And then I see there's like a little, again, another cluster. There's a cluster. And then in that cluster, I'm just doing a side hatching because I see the dark right there, right? So that's the dark, there's the dark. There's actually some dark in here too, but we wanna kind of get this guy in. So we're gonna kind of, and now watch in between, in between those lines, the negative space, if you will, I can make that a little bit darker so that that stands out, so that the, the white part stands out. Right? So there's that. And then this part, um, I really wanted, oh, I wanna put this guy, this guy kind of comes, I'm gonna, I'm doing this tree next. And again, he's flat. When I look at him, look at how he sprawls out. I first went into drawn like this, but that's not the shape of that tree. Look at how like, He's not pointy like this, he's like this. So paying attention to the top of that tree really is more flattened horizontally. It's not, um, it's not a point, it's not a mountain peak. It's more flat at the top of this tree. And then these have like, you know, little, and I'm gonna come back in and fill him in. But I just want his basic, you know, his basic form. He comes over here. I'm gonna fill him in, don't worry but I want, where does, where does he end? And I'm looking at, look, this comes down at an angle. So see how I drew him at an angle to leave space for the other tree. Yeah. I don't feel like you're getting very good focus on my, my thing. Now this tree, um, again, this is my, this is my big guy. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put him in. Right. And I'm, I'm drawing the shape. Remember I told you he's kind of like cucumbers or fingers. You know, there's one coming down and this is going to take a long time. This is what took me the longest time yesterday to draw, right? And there's some coming out, there's some coming up, right? So see how I've changed the shape, oops, a little fuzzy. So I've changed the shape of everything that I'm doing, right? Like this had its own distinct shape. This was kind of messy. So I didn't, I left some little shrubbery, but this has a very distinct shape. Right. So I'm going to spend the most time. He's, he's the star of the show. I'm going to spend the most time. He almost touched the top, right? He almost touched the top. So I have him almost touching the top. Right. This is, and I can see he's a little short there, but you know, it's nature. That's the beauty too. Like it's nature. So the kind of cucumbers, they're kind of going everywhere. This one's coming out over here and then down. So this one's gonna take quite a bit of time. And some of them, you know, we're gonna leave these, these pieces white. And again, about where is he ending? I'm gonna draw in this bush over here. See this bush right there? I'm gonna draw him in just so I know where he has to end, where this has to end. And they, you know, they come in clusters. So some of them have clusters. They're not all individual. I'm gonna work on that in a minute to, to kind of finish it out, but I wanna show you the dark part. So watch, this is the funnest part. I've been waiting all class to show you this. Again, I'm gonna come up here and now I am gonna push pretty hard and I'm just gonna throw in the dark just on this side. 
and I'm pushing hard. If you happen to have, this is a 2B pencil. If you happen to have a darker pencil, that means a higher number B. So a 4B or a 6B, if you happen to have that, that's great. But if you still, you're like, no, I just have that. I just have that, uh, that regular writing one. Okay, so I'm going around. And again, can I, can I ask while you're shading, uh, Carrie, yes. because someone asked in the chat. Um, so yeah. why not the graphite stick here? Um, you could. Okay. Um, it's a wonderful question. You absolutely could. And if, again, I wanted to do something with something everybody had. So if you have that graphite stick, watch how quick this goes in. And look how dark it is, right? Like, look at how, look at how quickly this goes in with the graphite stick and look at how dark it is. It goes in super fast, but not everybody for this or workshop. I didn't think everyone was going to have a graphite stick, but it's totally worth getting. Look, it's totally worth getting because look at how easy and fast it lets you kind of go in there and, um, and work it out. Right. Like it's taking me way less time with the graphite stick than with the pencil. It's a great question. I would use it if you have it and you might want to go buy one now. <laughs> you might want to go buy one. Look at how dark that is. Look at, whoa, right. Way better than the 2B, right. Little stick, but you might not have it. So if you don't have it, don't tell me you can't do it. Find a way. If you don't have it, you use your pencil. Use your pencil, but if you do have it, yeah, it goes a lot quicker. Thank you for the question, Sonia, or for whoever asked. <clears throat> All right, so now, okay, so I'm only gonna do up to him, but look at how, how nice and dark that is. Look at dark, dark, right? Look at how dynamic this is looking already. And actually because of this, I darkened it. I'm gonna darken over here too, because they kind of match, right? Right. So dark, dark, dark. Yeah. And this could probably be darkened a little bit now too, because we darkened my darks that this could be, you know, there we go. Yeah. Look at that. How cool. I'm going to rub this out and then I'm going to show you how to get, see these little leaves. Ooh, it's so much fun. So much fun. I'm still going to rub this out. You could leave it just like that texture, but I'm going to rub them because I like stuff nice and soft and smooth. Circular always. Now it's getting hard because look, now I'm in like a little tiny area. That's what this guy is for. Or a pointed Q-tip. A pointed Q-tip. A regular Q-tip if you don't have a pointed, but they do make pointed, and this allows you to get in the tight areas. And now I can get in the negative space of that beautiful vine, right? And now I can kind of come in here, you know, individually in between these leaves. Okay, and up here too, right? I can come around. It's a little bit, it's pointed. So it allows me to get in the tight areas. You need a big tool for a big area, a big tool for a big area, a small tool for a small area. But look at that, look at that. Are you ready? I'm so sorry that the other people had to miss this. You're gonna take your eraser. And actually let's start with a big one. We're gonna start with a big one and we're gonna erase out the leaves. Is he coming in? Nope, I do need this one. He wasn't working. Cool, huh? Can you see it? We can see it. It is 
fascinating. It is just fascinating. It's a really so, great eraser for just uh, just office supply eraser too. Yeah, yeah, just a regular a regular eraser, right? Will work. Will work. This just you know is around for a long time. And again, over here, right? There's some over here, right? So. And again, what I'm doing is I'm not just making little dots. I'm going, did you see how I was moving my hand kind of irregular? Like sometimes I pull down, sometimes I, I'm going side to side, but I'm either going up or over or down or this way or this way. So I'm, I'm making my hand move in irregular fashion. Sometimes they're lobbed together. Sometimes they're independent, um, you know, so Oh, and this one actually comes down. He has one that comes down. So what it's doing is it's doing exactly what we want it to. It's indicating there are leaves back there, but they are not important. They are not important. They are the background, which is fuzzy. The background is always fuzzy. Even if it's dark, it's still fuzzy. So now we have a dark background with fuzzy leaves, but your eye reads it as a leaf, right? It reads it as depth and as a leaf, yeah? And then all of this beautiful, you know, all of that beautiful stuff is gonna happen. And look, it's even better than that one because this one was lighter. I did it with a pencil, but all of this beautiful, you know, um, intricacy is gonna happen in the middle part. And then your light part's already done. So it's, it, it takes a little bit of time, but it is so, so worth it. And that's my favorite part. I love the erase out technique, we've erasing a, things out for the background. We've got a quick question from Mary Lou about whether the type of paper matters. Um, the type of paper will matter. Um, typically you want, Mary Lou, you typically want a drawing paper. So when you go to the store, they have a sketchbook and that is not the one to get. You actually want to get one that says drawing paper. I happen to just be working on Xerox paper today and it's not working particularly well. So you could just use something as easy as Xerox paper, but drawing paper is thicker. And again, the weave is a little bit better and the fibers that they use are nicer. Xerox paper is like a quarter of a penny, right? <laughs> like to make a sheet of Xerox paper. So if you get a book of a book of drawing paper, but I do recommend it's drawing not sketch because sketch is very, very similar to Xerox paper. It's very thin. It's not made with the greatest fibers and um, it's just not gonna hold up as well. Drawing paper that I like is Strathmore. Mm. Strathmore is the brand. I am a Strathmore girl. I wish they gave me a commission for every time that I promoted it in all of my classes because I'd have like a bajillion dollars. It's, it's the brand I use for everything because it's durable. It hasn't broken. Like I had one lady one time she was drawing and she drew so hard. She ripped through her page. Oh. She, was on, she was on sketch paper and it was the end of her project. It was a beautiful tortoise and she, she ripped a hole right in it. Oh. And I was like, I am so sorry, but that's your paper. That's what happened. So she caught it up and made a mixed media piece. <laughs> but yeah, the drawing paper won't do that because it's, it's a little bit thicker and, and hardier for you to hold whatever you're doing. Great question. Thank you. Um, do you want me to keep going? I can keep going if you're set or if you guys want to wrap, let me know. Wrap, I think we should probably wrap it here. And uh, I did, I did um, uh, commit here that we'll set up another date and I'll we'll let people know as soon as we set up a date with you and then we yeah. can let everyone know that that's when they can join in. Um, I really, really appreciate it. This is, uh, it, it is, it's so good to look in a refreshing way. That's something, something that we forget what the name of the plant is. What, it, where is it? What does it look like? Is it fuzzy? Is it in the foreground? Is it in the midground? Is it, you know, is it a focal point? Tones and textures. Yeah. 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 Can you, um, yes. Can you use the visual, the visual language? That's what right. I'm going to challenge your gardeners to do. Can you use the visual language? Okay. Well, to, uh, we'll ask people to, uh, we'll ask people to send in um, photographs that we can show next time of awesome. things that they, that they want to draw. 
and and they have to use visual language to explain and we'll pick the best couple and say here this is a good good we'll so we'll figure. see we'll see if yeah. they can model what you if they can do what you model thank you carrie thank awesome you thank you so much for having me i hope you had a great time today those who are in southeast michigan carrie yacklin does teach at the birmingham bloomfield um uh, arts art center art center yep art center oh, and and, and, and now at, and now at OCC. Yeah, OCC, yeah. 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 Wait, which um, campus are you at? Uh, Orchard Ridge. It's in Farmington. That's the artsy campus. That's where I took all my photography classes. Yeah. It's yeah. still highly fo photography focused. You'd be happy to know the chair is is a photographer, and he's a lovely man. That's oh, great. Good. Glad to hear that. <laughs> what was his name? Nick Valenti. He was one of my instructors. Yes. Wow. Yeah. How awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to let you go, Carrie. We'll sign okay. off officially here so that we can uh, get our recordings. We have uh, a lot of things to do in the garden. All of us do. Yes. Let's see how we go to share. Oh, it's down here. Sure. Yeah. So we will just zap to the end. No. And say if there are questions, we could come back and work on those in a uh, in a second session with Carrie. But uh, we we would pose to you if you've got uh, a picture that you're looking at wanting to draw, if you want to send it to us, maybe we we'll, maybe it could be used in the next session. But you need to use visual language to describe it. Um, Pat had a hand raised, um, and if you have a question, you can go ahead and ask that now. We'll get that. Uh, there we go. And uh, we'll move our tip cuttings, our echinacea woes, which we'll wait because they are, uh, you have the link that tells you what to do right now, but we'll, we'll talk about it. We'd like to give you our spin in our next webinar on why it is that we end up in this situation with things like purple cone flowers with trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll do that at another time because this is gardening. And just like when you go out to garden and you were going to do X, Y, and Z. You did A, B, C. <laughs> it, as long as it's garden, uh, it's gardening, that's what's fun. Our friend Will puts it best. Gardening is a process, not a product. It's an ongoing thing. And uh, we're going to on go out into the garden now. That's it for our uh, uh our uh, garden artistry this week and we will catch you next week we're talking about pruning young trees and uh tree like shrubs we'll do that next week along with our other little bits and pieces thank you sonia nicola for taking care of all of the technical details in the chat and uh, thank you everyone for being here uh it's very enjoyable to know we have people out there yeah um get out there and garden yeah enjoy okay. your day see you now Ta -ta. Hey, everyone have a great weekend Thank you.